Hi guys, this is Lee from Lee Bishop Photography and I've had quite a few people asking me about this image that I took of my daughter and asking how I edited it. So I thought this would be a good picture to choose to go through and, and just show you what I did to get to this end result. It was a Halloween portrait that we did together so obviously it, it's a little bit more uh, edited than you might normally do for a child's portrait but it gives that uh, cool kind of ghostly child look which we were going for. So that's the finished picture and I'm just going to click off those final two layers and here you can see uh, the original image that I started with. I'm just going to go back down to the bottom here. So the first thing I do when I edit an image is the basic retouching. So um, healing, um, any cloning, and dodging and burning. So I will just zoom in a little bit here to her face. And I mean, she's a five-year-old child, so <laughs> her skin's obviously pretty good. But um, there are a few little spots that I wanted to tidy up because, as I said, I was going for that um, really porcelain ghostly look. So just a few little areas like a little spot there and there and some unevenness there. We've got hairs coming into her face, like there and there, there. Some are going all the way across her face there. So there's, a, you know, nothing major, but a few little elements that I thought were a little bit distracting. So what I did, I'll just delete that layer. I got my spot healing brush and I basically just spot healed most of that. Even, even the hairs I just did spot healing on. Um, and the end result is that. I didn't take everything away. You'll see there's um, some little hairs here that I left. And that's because I figured um, actually it would be easier to just fix those when I was dodging and burning because they're really pretty blurred out. They're just a bit lighter than her skin, so I thought I could just burn those down a bit um, so that they wouldn't be an issue. So I'll just zoom out a little bit. So again, that's before the cleaning up and that's after. So you see there's also a few areas around the cloak in the hair here. Uh, some of the bits of hair over here. Some of the more in focus bits there as well as these creases in the hood that I decided didn't need to be there. I'll just zoom out a little bit. So that was the, from there to there, the basic healing, just on a new layer with the spot healing brush and a little bit of the patch tool for these larger areas there. The next thing I did was dodging and burning. Okay, and the way I do dodging and burning, you see down here I've got two curve adjustment layers. I've got one for the burn curve, which is just a curve that's been taken down a little bit. Um, and likewise, the dodge curve is just a curve that's been brought up a little bit. And both of those have a black layer mask on them. Uh, I also use the Beauty Retouching Academy panel. It's not compulsory at all. You could easily set these up on your own, uh, but I do like to use it. Press the local dodge and burn. You can see it sets you up the dodge and burn curves. And it also puts a visual aid layer on top, which is clicked off, but you can click it on and that will turn your image to black and white, which when I'm doing dodging and burning is the way I like to work because it takes all the color information away. So you can just focus on the uh, luminosity values and then you know you can just turn it off and delete it if you want. So I'm just going to take those away. Those were the new layers it put on. But if we go back here and I turn this on, I'll zoom back in. That's probably where you'll see most of the difference on her skin. So that was before and that was after. Okay. I'll just um, press Alt and click onto my dodge curve and you can see the mask. So you can see where, where I painted in white for my dodging. And the burning was there. That's where I did most of my burning. 
So again, um, it took a little bit of time, but I think it's time well spent just from there to there. Okay. The next thing I did is I, I did some color changes. Okay, I was happy with my retouching, that was done. Onto the color changes. Uh, so we'll zoom right in with our eye because I did some color changes there. Okay, so that's the eye. I used a selective color adjustment layer. So that's before and that's after. Okay, so um, I didn't change the whole eye when I did these changes. You see it's not really affecting the entire part of the eye. What I actually did is I went in and I, I painted where I wanted it to show up more. Just to give a more sort of realistic effect. Um, and I'll show you the mask here. Alt, click on the mask. You can see that I was painting in specific areas rather than just selecting the whole eye. Okay, so that's the eye. I also made some color changes to her lips. So we'll go down to her lips. Okay, so this is before and that's after. It's not a huge difference and with the hue saturation layer uh, I just increased the saturation and a tiny bit uh, the hue towards the, the blues just with the master um, hue saturation and then I went in with selective color the next color change I made was to her hair and again this was a uh, selective color a few little changes that just took us from there to there a lot of the yellowness is, is leaving um, and I'm adding a lot of magenta into there I took a lot of yellow out in the red channel. Okay, so I liked that. The next stage was that I decided that I wanted the background to be a little bit more desaturated. Uh, so what I actually did is I, the visual aid layer that I had from before when I was dodging and burning, I actually turned that back on. And then I used the layer mask to just painted around the outsides area that are white or the area that are being affected um, by this black and white so I was literally just sort of desaturating um, around the edges. The next step was that I created some luminosity masks okay and the way that I did this is I have an action from Pratik Nike and you can literally press the action, press play and it will build all of the luminosity masks for you. When you create these in the channels, which has gone to the channels, uh, it massively increases your file size. So if that's a concern to you, you might want to delete them at the end. Um, but what you'll notice is, so you have your normal RGB, red, green, and blue channels, and then you start having these other channels. We've got a lights, light lights, white lights, super lights, don't really have any in this picture, <clears throat> and then darks. And again it's just like with a layer mask, uh, anything that's white is the area that's going to be selected and affected by any changes you might make. So what you can then do um, is you go, you've got to make sure you're clicked back on your RGB, but you can turn any of these into a selection by holding down command or control clicking on it. Sometimes you'll get this warning, no pixels are more than 50% selected so the edges won't be visible. So it's just saying that um, you have a quite a small selection area so you're not going to see anything. But it has still made the selection so you can just click OK and not worry about that. Go back to your layers and then if you want to make a curve adjustment you can press the curve and you'll see down here I click and the layer mask it has loaded that selection into the layer mask. So if I wanted to um, basically here 
just, just if I make any increases, it's just going to affect the lighter areas of the image. So I could click on my curve and bring that up. It's going to just affect that. So it's a really nice way um, of selectively brightening or darkening areas um, in your picture. These are my luminosity masks off. I zoom in a little bit. So off, on. Okay, I mean it's subtle, but it's there. It's quick and easy to do, and I like it. So I wanted my subject to stand out a little bit more, so I wanted to darken the background down further. So I did a levels adjustment layer. There we go, and again with my mask, I just painted it off of her because I didn't want it to be changing the brightness of my subject. I wanted to add a little bit of contrast into her hair. And I did that by a curves adjustment layer, just really a little bit of increasing the, the midtones and highlights there. So you see I put that on there. So it's affecting her hair and her face. Off. On. Okay. So then I decided when I looked at this that I really wanted her eye to pop out and stand up even more than it is now. I'm adding light onto the iris. It's just a um, fill layer with white um, set to overlay and again with a black layer mask so you paint it on where you want it to show the effect and again that's off and on and I'll show you my mask so you can see again I was being very specific about where I painted I didn't just take a big brush and do the whole eye I really got in to these little areas that are naturally a bit brighter in her eye um, and just emphasized that um, and then I also just have a layer to darken the outline of the iris so this is the whole eye changes off and on. Okay, and from a distance, it's still noticeable, and it, it, it still keeps a real sort of nice 3D effect to the eye. A lot of luminosity in there, I think. Okay, I'll zoom out. I did a little bit of uh, darkening down of the corners with some curves. And then I got into some color toning with uh, some gradient maps. I want to desaturate things a little bit. Um, so what I did is I first put on this gradient map. So this is off. That's it on. And this would be at 100%. And then I just brought it down to about 37, I think. Like that. And then what I did is I copied that, I pressed Command J or Control J on, on Windows um, and got an additional one. It's exactly the same, you see. But I changed the blending mode to soft light. Here, I'll turn that on. That's off, on. Very subtle. Turned it to soft light, which tends to add contrast. So again, this would be up near 100%. So I usually take it all the way down to zero and then just sort of bring it up to where I'm happy with it. And on this one it was really low, it was like 6%. So that was my toning. And it's looking good, but it could use a little bit of extra something. So the next stage was that I use Alien Skin Exposure 7. Now I really like Alien Skin. Um, if you've never tried it, I'd recommend trying a free trial. I think it's worth it, I use it a lot. Uh, on every image actually now. So I took my stamped layer and then I went into filter in Skin Exposure 7, which opens it up in a new window. And then this is the actual filter that I used on it. It's a custom filter that I made. Um, I've saved under my preset so I could go back to it and show it to you. Um, I usually set the overall intensity around about 50% and then start making changes. Uh, as you can see, I increase the contrast a little bit. I have a warming filter on at a very low density. It's just a density of 11 there. OK, 
I made some color changes, again, took out some yellow um, and upped the cyans and the blues just because of her eye. I wanted that to really stand out. Down in the tone curve, I have just a slight contrast curve um, applied to it. Um, and the highlights are brought down a tiny bit just from there down to there. I've got no split toning, no vignette, no overlays, no sharpening, no grain. A tiny little bit of glow with the, the infrared here, just slight um, halation opacity and spread. And if we zoom in, you might be able to see the difference. That's it turned off. Just if you look in these kind of areas here and up there, see it come on there? and off. It's just adding a little bit of extra um, glowiness to the skin in those areas. It's quite subtle, uh, but that's it on. Okay, so then I would click apply and it will apply that to my image. Okay, and then what I did, so that's the before and that's after the uh, layer has been added on from Alien Skin and then you can layer mask that, uh, which I did. Um, and I just uh, masked it out a little bit where it was getting a bit dark in that area. So you've got the flexibility to do that with layer masks. And then what I did is I opened it up again in Alien Skin. Um, so I'll just open up that same area. So this is the image opened up in Alien Skin again. And uh, again, I have a grain preset. So I'll just click that on there as I go down to the grain. And if you zoom in, you can see that there's grain added there and you can make any alterations you want to make to the grain and again click apply. So this is it added um, back into Photoshop as a new layer. And again what I've done is I've put a ma layer mask on it and you can see I didn't want the grain on my subject so I painted it off of her. I just wanted the grain in the background um, as a textural element. So the next thing I wanted to do was um, darken things down a little bit more, um, which I did with some um, curves. And I also wanted to brighten up her face a little bit, which I did with a levels adjustment layer. Okay. The final thing that I wanted to do to make her eye really pop out, i zoom in here, um, is with a curves adjustment layer, I did that and the changes that I made were a slight change in the RGB and then I went into the individual color channels and I raised the red and slightly dropped the green and slightly dropped the blue as well. And again, if I show you my mask, I just painted it um, around the bottom section of the eye. I didn't extend up into the shadow areas there because it would be unnatural for that amount of light to be getting in there. Let's zoom back out. And then I added another faint gradient map, same one as before. And I just really wanted to uh, mat out the background a little bit more um, and bring the colour up a little bit. So I pretty much painted it off of my subject and mainly had it affecting the background and a little bit of a cloak down here. And then the final thing that I wanted to do was some sharpening. Um, again, I used Alien Skin for this. Um, I know there's a million ways you can do this in Photoshop, but um, I like the result that Alien Skin gives. So I'm going to open it up again. Okay, and then again I have a preset. It's just for the sharpened low radius. You zoom in. This is before, and this is after. Okay, so it's just a sharpening applied there. And you can obviously reduce the opacity and use layer masks when you bring it back into Photoshop. So once it was in Photoshop, I just applied a black layer mask over it to um, mask all of the changes off. And then I used a white brush to just paint in the areas that I wanted to sharpen. Um, it's mainly around the eye, you can see some bits of her hair um, and some other areas of her hair falling down. So I'll zoom in.
that's off and that's on okay and then just a little final finishing touch I wanted to again increase the contrast a little bit and I just did that with a, a simple curve bringing up the highlights a little bit and that's the end result so if we go back to the beginning that's before and that's after so if you've got any questions or there's any other subjects you'd like to see me do some videos on then please let me know I'd, I'd love to do some more um, and get some more practice at it right thanks for watching guys